I personally do is um, timeline of my PhD, but don't. I never do something like, okay, first year I will do methods, second year I will do results, or, and so on. Like, please just try to specify your long-term and short-term goals. So first thing you have to do is to sit down with your uh, supervisors and discuss what do they expect from you and what you expect from them. Uh, draw the first draft of your uh, thesis, how many chapters they expect you to have and how many chapters you would like to have, what they should be about, and then um, create a timeline for the next four years or three years, uh, but specified. So first half a year I will do this and that and that. And then if you really follow this scheme, you see which project goes well and with which project you lag behind. And also what is important is to very quickly notice um, a problem with the project. So if something goes wrong, don't try to, uh, don't spend months on trying to your, uh, solve that by yourself. Just ask your supervisors and fix that as quickly as possible because sometimes it might be something very simple and you get stuck for weeks because you didn't ask. So also don't be afraid of asking questions because this is how we also learn. Okay, so you would say like you start you're kind of a beginner and then you are you should uh, dare to ask people when you don't know. Of course, people. yes. When I arrived here, uh, it was the middle of COVID pandemic. I was completely alone in the office and we had to start up the clinical st uh, study. Um, I had absolutely no idea how to start and I'm not a that I don't speak Dutch. So my first days, my first months were focused on calling everybody, writing emails and asking about every single thing just to solve my problems as fast as possible because um, that's why we are in a team. So we are not working alone. If you are a part of the team, then it's obvious that you should ask questions because it can be solved also with support of somebody else. Okay, so in short, you would say have a vision from the beginning of your PhD? Yes, and a specified plan. So not only first, second, for third and fourth year, but then divide this into six years uh, gaps and then for every month. And then, for example, what I do, I sc every Friday, I schedule my entire next week, day by day, sometimes hour per hour. So what I'm going to do next weekend, next week. And then uh, you can also write down your tasks for every week and every day, because then you can really divide your tasks for each day. And then it's all scheduled. And what I also do is um, I have a notebook uh, for each study which is running. And then I always write down a um, summary from each meeting uh, to every study. So then you really know what's going on. And even those simple things like, okay, for this study, I have to uh, change this graph and that graph, and I have to send a question about this and that. And then you are just crossing things uh, from the list. And it also helps you to uh, not get lost on the track. Okay. How much of a week do you plan? Like, do you plan 100% of the hiring? And from what time to what time? No. Or do you uh, keep some uh, free time? I always keep some free time because there is always some, uh, something uh, coming up. Mm -hmm. okay. But there are different attitudes. For example, there is one method I've, about which I've heard that it's good, but it always seems to me that then I'm lazy. But the, the idea is to work 45 minutes and then have to have 15 minutes break. And in practice, you feel like not working because you have so many breaks. And this is also how I felt when I started with this method. But lots of people say that it helps. So maybe that's also the way to start. Okay, but you didn't like it? Um, it depends. If I have to write, then it, it's helpful because these 15 minutes really helps you to clear your mind. But there are some days when you have to really do lots of administration and um, organization things. 
And there are so many tasks per day that you don't even notice and it's already 1 p.m. So it really depends on what you want to do. Like uh, then we can go back to the previous question as well. I also think like uh, to manage your PhD is first to figure out what you want in the long run. And that is very important, I think. And then the second thing is to start to do it because I think like the people who choose to do a PhD is rather self-motivated because it's not like uh, the thing that you have to do in your life. They prob you're probably looking forward to something and then you choose to spend these four years in academia and you start decide to spend these four years in research. So, yeah. Last question, I guess. <laughs> it's about organization and managing yeah. a PhD. And, and then like first you figure out what's your aim and then like you can manage your your like uh, four years and then okay so you mean like if we know what we want we yeah, can uh, just to act in the right way towards this goal yeah because if you are not self-motivated it can be like it i think like one of the reasons for people get depression during phd is because they realize they have so much work to do and then they just lack of motivation or they just uh, kind of they know there are so many things to do and then they just cannot face it anymore and then like the, the depressed or the pressure just getting higher and higher so like uh, starting to be active that is also important okay yeah and how do do you think they should manage if you start to feel like all this stress this mean a lot of work to do and all this is there a way to stop feeling this, this way well i think like uh, that is like a different feel that stress also for different reason but for me when i feel super stressed it's more like i know there's a lot of things to do and this rather messy at the moment I'm, I'm not sure which thing i need to do first so i think like a, one of the thing to release the stress if it's come from like too many work then you can probably have an overview of the work and then you split it into small modules and you just start it right that moment to do a sub module of the thing that you need to do in the long run and then you just uh, gradually solve the problem and you gradually like reduce the workload in the future time i think that's really important i think like for me like taking action is the best way to release the pressure that i have set goals goals per year i mean do you want one article per year that's very well possible in that case you need to set the goal and then calculate backwards what you should be doing every month uh, so you have monthly goals and weekly goals and try to stick to them um, but also not be too rigid because plans may very well change and chances are big that you will be doing something entirely different uh, by the end of your phd uh, to compared to what you were thinking you would be doing towards the end of your PhD. Uh, so at the same time, you will have to be flexible enough to come up with new ideas uh, because yeah, perhaps 90% doesn't work out. That's no problem because you'll find uh, new ideas, new solutions. Um, and you will have to continuously stick into mind, okay, if I have this new solution, this new wonderful uh, set of analyses, you are able to do them, but you should still have the time limit because you only have three or four years. Yeah, so I have a time schedule for the, for the whole PhD project um, per year and per month. Um, and based on that one, I make the, the weekly schedules. Okay, when did you make this PhD schedule? When my supervisor <laughs> asked me <Okay. laughs> to so make like when, the, the schedule, <laughs> yes. Okay. So like when you started the PhD, for example, uh, no. you had like a four year plan somehow. No, when I was complaining that it might be a bit too much. And then he asked me to, okay, make a schedule and then we can see. <laughs> okay. And was yeah. it too much? Or a bit, you... a bit, okay. yeah. So did you remove some stuff? Yeah. Or... Okay. <laughs> yeah. How much too much do you think it was? Uh, like, uh, I think uh three quarter of a year too much okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah okay so by doing this schedule you realized you wanted to do too much so then you could yeah. reduce a bit yeah true so yeah. you'd say you'd and i i yeah we had to pri prioritize the, the projects yeah okay because i had a lot of projects that were nice and funny uh but were not um, nice and funny yes nice and funny <laughs> but <laughs> but, but they would like not the... contribute to my uh my okay. thesis 
So by doing this schedule, you could like select better the projects yeah. and uh, on the relevance. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So then you, you did like the yearly schedule and then you put it for monthly tasks. So for example, yes. in December now, yes. you have like a certain amount of tasks you want to do. Yes. And, and always you... schedule the holidays. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how much? How do you schedule it? You say like for one week I will. Mm -hmm. At that point, yeah. I don't work at all, for yeah. example. Yeah. And you take real holidays, or do you work during the holidays? Uh, <laughs> no, I try to get uh, the real holidays. Yeah, and don't take my laptop with me. No. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yes. That's good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that's important because otherwise there's always something to do. So um, yeah, and you can always study in holidays, but. Yeah, sometimes it's important to just take a few weeks off. 